Hi YouTube, Darth here. This is Yes or No, a weapon review series where I give a clear and concise answer as to what weapons you should be using in Battlefield 4. Today's weapon is the M416, yet another H&K weapon for the Assault class. It's one of what I would like to call the Three Amigos, including the Ace-23 and L85A2. These Three Amigos are very accurate assault rifles with middling rates of fire that are designed as all-rounders. But how does the M416 fare against those other choices? Should you be using the M416, yes or no? Yes. A very big yes. If you've spent any amount of time with the M416, you'll understand that it's not only a great weapon, but it's a probable contender for the best weapon in Battlefield 4. I say probable because there are benefits and attractions to this weapon, like any other, and places where it works best. So let's talk about the great things now. At 750 rounds per minute, it lives in the middle of the road rate of fire that provides a good combination of output and ease of control. It follows the typical 5.56 damage model, so it's not the most amazing damage output ever, but it can hang in in both short and long engagements quite readily. Oh my, if you are a whore for reload times like I am, you'll really be pleased with the 1.85 second round in the chamber reload time. The longer empty reload is a little over half a second longer at 2.4 seconds. In reality, this blazing fast time lets you finish off a group of enemies, reload, and continue firing. This gives the M416 a lot of power to hang in CQB situations when other guns might run dry and have prohibitive reloading times. The M416 has the lowest combined recoil of the three Amigos at just 0.32 degrees up, 0.12 left, and 0.28 right. It is a bit less predictable than the L85A2, and the M416's first shot recoil multiplier can be a bit punitive at a 2.2 times multiplier. Overall, with the gun's middling time to kill, this translates into superior performance at 15 meters and beyond. Like the Ace-23 and L85A2, the M416 has its share of good features, most of which help to accentuate the very middle-of-the-road nature of this weapon. Most of its other attributes are pretty average for an assault rifle. It's not the best in CQB, it's not the best at long range. But at its sweet spot, it dominates. Before I talk about that more, I'm going to talk about what's not so sweet about the M416. At only 600 meters per second, the M416 certainly isn't the slowest weapon when it comes to putting bullets down range, but it is in the back half of the pack for the assault rifles. It's a detraction that can be overcome easily enough, you just have to lead your target slightly more than other assault rifles. You'll really only notice it from time to time as the 600 meters per second is still pretty good for a weapon in Battlefield 4. The M416 gets beat routinely by faster firing weapons in CQB. With a minimum time to kill of 322 milliseconds, it's only about average for an assault rifle. There are tons of other rifles, carbines, PDWs, and shotguns that are going to beat it close up. Again, this detraction can be alleviated somewhat with careful use of hipfire versus enemies. At a 2.2 times multiplier, the first shot recall multiplier on the M416 is on the higher side. It's not a huge detraction, but it is something to be aware of that your gun is going to hop quite a bit on the first shot when compared to others and can make short microbursts more difficult to control. It also lends itself to running with an angle grip when initially playing with the M416. Keep in mind that you'll want to graduate from that setup once you get accustomed to the M416. So that does it for the negatives. All around, the M416 is a really powerful mid-range weapon that excels across a variety of engagement ranges and can be made to work in others. It's not the best at CQB, it's not the best at range. Among the three Amigos, it brings a reload and aimed advantage in endurance fights. The Ace-23 carries more ammo, is a frame better at CQB, and excels at landing headshots with the first two bullets, while the L85A2 is better on the move than either the M416 or Ace-23. Which weapon you prefer really depends on your playstyle. Taking a look at the numbers, I ran the chance to hit of the M416 against the Ace-23, L85A2, and the AEK. They're all pretty even up close, and the AEK becomes a big loser at range, while the M416 takes over. For the sake of keeping it interesting, I also ran the three amigos against the Scar-H. This time, the Scar-H wins on aimed fire. This is, provided you can control the upwards recoil perfectly over the duration of a kill shot. How does that translate into damage done? Well, the AEK is going to win at 10 meters or less. The M416 becomes the most efficient killer in about the 20 to 25 meter range and hangs on for the rest of the universe. However, with the Scar-H in the mix, the Scar-H takes over completely. Translation, the Scar-H is probably going to beat the three amigos at body shots by a couple of frames at almost every range. But the upwards recoil of the Scar-H is far less forgiving than the M416. 
So these five guns are probably the best fully automatic assault rifles in Battlefield 4. What you want, characteristics-wise, is going to determine which you prefer. Myself, I love fast reload times and consistency combined with ease of use, and the M416 is my favorite among them. Let's talk about controlling it. The M416's recoil pattern is pretty mild at 0.32 degrees up, 0.12 left, and 0.28 right. Its first shot recoil multiplier is fairly hefty at a 2.2 times multiplier for the first bullet that leaves the weapon. This means a recoil pattern that is going to carry the weapon up and to the right. To counter this recoil, you'll simply pull down and to the left. The M416 doesn't fight very hard after the first bullet, and the spread isn't too terrible at 0.098 degrees per shot. If you try to hose, this will still get out of control, so as per usual, you're going to need to burst the weapon. As the M416 kills in two bullets to the head, or five to six body shots, I typically shoot in five to six round bursts. Don't try to microburst, as the M416's first shot recoil multiplier will really make this weapon kick quite a bit. The best performance of the M416 is in the mid-range, and you'll have a slightly more difficult time keeping your shots on target if your reticule is constantly bouncing around. It's always a bit interesting to try and write tactics for a weapon that's quite good at most every range. Let's keep two things in mind though. The M416 is not great at CQB, and it has some disadvantages against moving targets because of the somewhat lower bullet velocity. Firstly, in CQB, you'll need to make one of two decisions. You can either stick to your primary or swap to a secondary. If you're going to stick to the M416, hipfire is going to be your best bet. It's fairly typical for an assault rifle having okay hipfire that is best suited for ranges closer than 10 to 15 meters. If your enemy is further than that, and ideally they will be, you'll want to keep your sights trained on them and your feet firmly planted in the ground. Strafing will really hurt your aimed fire. Secondly, if you're not about sticking to your primary or you're out of ammo, that's when you're going to need to pick up a solid secondary. This will ideally be a secondary best suited for close quarters like the Shorty or the G18. As for bullet velocity, you're going to just have to play with the weapon and get a feel for its performance at range. Hitting targets beyond 50 to 60 meters can be tricky if they're on the move. Ideally, you're planting your feet for the best spread performance and leading your target by a reasonable amount. It'll take some getting used to. Once you get really accustomed to the performance of the M416, you'll be cutting through swaths of enemies at pretty much every range. One problem I still struggle with though is pulling away from enemies too soon before they die. You may wish to set up your HUD to give you clear indicators when an enemy has died so you don't end up getting killed by an enemy you thought was already dead. As always, I like to cross-reference the top users of a weapon on BF4Stats.com's leaderboards with their respective battle logs. This time, I found that with the M416, players tended to prefer a near-universal setup. Since it's my own setup for this weapon, I'll just jump into what I ran with as well. For the optic on the M416, I went with the Coyote. I think this is a pretty typical choice for me and just about every other player. It's wide and open, and although you can sometimes lose your dot in close quarters chaos, it seems to get the job done better than the RDS or the Cobra at those ranges. I wouldn't recommend going much higher in optic magnification as the first shot recoil multiplier the M416 makes aim fire through very high magnification very difficult. Now for my attachment, I bet this will shock you, but I ran with the laser sight. This feels like a necessity on the M416, particularly because it has a disadvantage in close quarters. Proper laser management, as always, is going to be required. There's no reason to keep it on when you're blasting at mid-range, but you're definitely going to want it on when you're running and gunning in close quarters. The barrel is going to be a pretty standard pick across the medium rate of fire weapons, and in this case I went with the heavy barrel. It's hard to resist that increased accuracy on a weapon that is all about mid-range accuracy. The bonus to aimed fire and on the move fire is also certainly quite nice. For my grip, I evolved a bit on this one. I had initially started and played with the angle grip on the M416 for years and only recently switched to the stubby grip. I'd recommend playing with whichever you feel the most comfortable, but you should eventually switch to the stubby. The combination of the stubby grip heavy barrel is a hard one to beat for these medium rate of fire weapons, and once you get accustomed to the upwards recoil, works amazingly well on the M416. Now, you can make the M416 work with a lot of options, suppressors come to mind, and I'm sure I've even thrown a vertical grip on here before. But where the weapon really shines is in that tuned mid-range as an accurate rifle with plenty of ammo in the magazine to down whole squads. The M416 is definitely my favorite weapon in Battlefield 4. It was a yes even before I did all the research to put this video together. But the M416 definitely has close competition with the Scar H for my top pick in Battlefield 4. I highly encourage you to consider using the M416 if you're like me, where you have a preference for taking body shots and love fast reloads. 
If you're some kind of contrarian, you could use the L85 for slightly better on the move and CQB performance. Its bullpup design makes it better at moving and shooting, but beware of the long reload times. If you are the kind of person that needs something that will give better headshot performance, the Ace-23 certainly lands its first two bullets more reliably. And in general, the Ace-23 has better CQB performance than the M416 in addition to a huge ammo capacity. That's it for this episode of Yes or No. If there's something you think I missed, or if you have a particularly different take on the M416, please let me know in the comments below. If there's a weapon you'd like to see reviewed on the series, leave a comment indicating which weapon. And since people always ask, yes, I will be continuing this series in Battlefield 1. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time, YouTube.